O Mother of God, shield us under your wings from all dangers. You are our refuge, our greatest hope. Destroy and bring to naught those who would harm us because of our sins. O Most Blessed One, lead us to yourself, who are our haven of salvation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. The Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you have given us your own Mother Mary whose wonderful image we venerate, to be our mother, ever ready to help us. Grant, we pray, that we who continually seek her motherly aid may be found worthy to enjoy increasingly the fruit of our redemption. You live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. Abram was very rich in cattle, in silver and in gold. And Lot, who went with Abram, also had flocks and herds and tents, so that the land could not support both of them dwelling together. For their possessions were so great that they could not dwell together. And there was strife between the herdsmen of Abram's cattle and the herdsmen of Lot's cattle. At that time, the Canaanites and the Perizzites dwelt in the land. Then Abraham said to Lot, Let there be no strife between you and me, and between your herdsmen and my herdsmen, for we are kinsmen. Is not the whole land before you? Separate yourself from me. If you take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if you take the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes and saw that the Jordan Valley was well watered everywhere, like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt in the direction of Zoar. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. So Lot chose for himself all the Jordan Valley, and Lot journeyed east. Thus they separated from each other. Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, while Lot dwelt among the cities of the valley, and moved in his tent as far as Sodom. Now the men of Sodom were wicked, great sinners against the Lord. <coughs> the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, Lift up your eyes and look from the place where you are, northward and southward, and eastward and westward. For all the land which you see I will, give, I will give to you and to your descendants forever. I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth, so that if one can count the dust of the earth, your descendants also can be counted. Arise, walk through the length and the breadth of the land, for I will give it to you. So Abraham moved his tent and came and dwelt by the oaks of Mamre, which are at Hebron. And there he built an altar to the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O Lord, who may abide in your tent, 
Lord, grow me and abide in your tent. Whoever works without fault, who does whatever is just, and speaks the truth from his tent, from his heart, who does not slander with his tongue. Lord, who may abide in your tent? Who does no wrong to his neighbor, who casts no slur on a friend, who looks with scorn on the wicked, but honors those who fear the Lord. Lord, who may abide in your tent? Who lends no money at interest and accepts no bribes against the innocent, such a one shall never be shaken. Lord, who may abide in your tent? Alleluia. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. He who follows me will have the light of life. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Do not give dogs what is holy, and do not throw your pearls before swine, lest they trample them underfoot and turn to attack you. So whatever you wish that men would do to you, do so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide, and the way is easy that leads to destruction, and those who enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow, and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. Enter by the narrow gate. The gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life. And those who find it are few. Many well-meaning Christians nowadays are very much attracted to the popular prosperity theology. What is this prosperity theology? It is also popularly known as the prosperity gospel. Simply put, the prosperity gospel proposes that faith can be indicated by your wealth and your health. It proposes that faith equals health and weight and health and wealth. In other words, if I have more faith, I will be more rich and I will be more healthy. Reversely, health and wealth, therefore, become indicators of how much a faith a person has. It teaches that financial blessings, physical well-being, are always the will of God, and it is. And for us to have more access to these blessings, we need to have more faith. And how do we grow in that more aspect of more faith? We should have positive vibes. We should engage in positivity. If we, gave, if we give donations to religious causes, it will open up more material blessings to our lives. That in a nutshell is what the prosperity gospel proposes. What you see to this gospel is a far cry from the more popular prosperity gospel. Jesus, in fact, instructs his disciples that they must enter through the narrow gate and take the constricted road. In other words, the Lord is telling us that if we are to take his teaching to heart and live by the values of the gospel, we will in fact find ourselves taking the more difficult road in life. To follow Jesus and to live by his teaching is to take the narrow gate and the constricted road. It is what it is a narrow gate, a constricted road, that is the one that Jesus wants all of us to take. Why? Because the assurance that Jesus gives us is that we will find life 
He does not assure us of a prosperous life. He does not assure us of material blessings. He assures us of fullness of life. To pray a prosperous life is different from fullness of life. We can have a prosperous life, but we do not have fullness of life. But entering the narrow gate requires a clear focus, a attentiveness on our part. Saying yes to the Lord and to His teaching means that we will have to say no to a lot of other ways of doing things. And left to ourselves, the teachings of Jesus is not something that we will be naturally inclined to take. Why? Because discipleship is not the broad and spacious road that many of us will follow with excitement. In fact, the message of the gospel is one that many would rather avoid because it often runs counter to the way that it is taken, to the way that is taken by the majority. The gospel is always counter to and is opposed to the prevailing culture. Ordinarily, we would prefer a spirituality that would not disturb us, a spirituality that would just keep us in our comfort zones. We just pray and go to Mass every Sunday and give our donations. We are happy with it. But that is not the spirituality that Jesus proposes to us. On our own, we would prefer a gospel that would ensure us of prosperity without having to make demands on us. In other words, on our own, we would prefer a crossless Christ. But that is not the way of Christ. That is not the way of the gospel. Jesus invites us, as he strengthens us every day, we need to make a conscious choice if we are to grow and deepen in our relationship with Christ. Every day, we have to choose and to go to the narrow gate to take the Lord's way. The gate may be narrow and the road may be difficult, but Jesus assures us that this is the only way that leads to life, to the fullness of life. So, as we continue in this sacred celebration, let us ask the Lord to grant us the grace so that every day we may be able to choose wisely. May the Lord grant us the grace to, and strength and determination so that our everyday decisions, our everyday actions may always lead us to Him who is the way, the truth, and the fullness of life. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness, we have the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands 
It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite hearts, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. And may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, through your kindness and through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin and Mother Mary, may this offering redound to our present and eternal prosperity and peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your sin. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father all powerful, and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. We especially praise you and proclaim your glory as we honor the Blessed Virgin Mary. She received your word in the purity of her heart, and conceiving in her virgin womb, gave birth to our Savior, and so nurtured the church at its very beginning. She accepted God's parting gift of love as she stood beneath the cross, and so became the mother of all those who were brought to life through the death of her only son. She joined her prayers with those of the apostles, as together they awaited the coming of your Spirit, and so became the perfect pattern of the church at prayer. Raised to the glory of heaven, she cares for the pilgrim church with a mother's love, following its progress homeward until the day of the Lord dawns in splendor. Now, with all the angels and saints, we proclaim your glory and join in your unending hymn of praise. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, Save us, Savior, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection. You have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, 
We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, may this meaning of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit through your death gave life to the world, free me, my this most holy body and blood, from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments and never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. And may the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, 
now and at the hour of our death. The body of Christ. Body of Christ. Amen. Body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Amen. Christ. Amen. What has passed our lips as for the Lord? May we receive in purity of heart so that what we have given us in time may become our healing for eternity. And let us pray. We beseech you, O Lord, may the glorious intercession of your Immaculate Mother and Ever-Virgin Mary help free us from all dangers and by her goodness bring together in love those upon whom she showered her never-failing blessings. You live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks and be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen.